Good enough. I owe Jeff Howe a public apology. So, Jeff Howe, I apologize not reaching out to you last week before I took my trip to the East Coast, my friend. Uh, I'm good, man. I took the uh, I took the long trek from the second floor down to my basement bar office. To, uh, <laughs> so, you know, you, I was really out of the way here. <laughs> well, let's let's get into this. Uh, I, I want to start, Jeff, with Deshaun Watson. He's returning this week. Uh, anything you've heard from people inside the league? Your thoughts about? this return and, and what this might look like? Well, just from purely a football perspective, I feel like there's like everybody was sort of just waiting on Deshaun Watson to come back. And then it's like, boom, everything's going to be okay in Cleveland. We're kind of discounting the fact that the guy hasn't played competitive football in two years. Yeah. So what is that realistically going to look like? I look at like, I mean, you see a guy take four weeks off in the middle of the season, he comes back and he's the, all of a sudden out of sync. I mean, look at what we've talked about this several times now uh, on this show, Jimmy Garoppolo just missing training camp and, or the off season and, and Tim and the offense kind of taking a, about a month to kind of figure it out together. So, I mean, he's a dynamic player. We all know what he's capable of. I'm just not sure you're going to see it right away. Jeff, let's talk about another issue with the NFL. And it, look, it's it's a much different world when we go from Watson to something else. But does the NFL even care how much of a problem they have with this catch rule and the fact that they just get embarrassed at least three or four times a year with people throwing their hands up going, oh, what is a catch? It's the NFL. It should be pretty basic. It honestly feels like three or four times a week because it's, just, <laughs> it's impossible. And, and it happens in so many big games. I mean, you saw it happen on Thanksgiving, I think maybe a couple times, but it's, I mean, almost every primetime game, there comes a point where it's just, I, I mean, I remember back in the day when, when you and I, Nick, would walk uphill to, uh, to school, you know, both ways and, oh, yes. in the snow and all that fun stuff. Like, it was easy. You knew what a catch was. You could sit there on the couch with your friends, with your with your dad, whoever you were watching football with, and you'd see the replay and you'd be like, okay, pretty sure that's a catch or that's not a catch. And they changed the rules so many times over the last however many years that like, even when you think you remember what the rule used to be, it's like, oh no, that's actually outdated three <laughs> times over. So nobody knows what it is. It's such a pain. It's, what are we doing? Yeah. The survive the ground thing is like this, this debate. Does it even exist anymore? Is that a thing anymore? Uh, Dean Blandino, Chris Alave's catch on Sunday against the Niners. He's, He's talking about how, well, he didn't take a third step because he tripped over himself, so it doesn't count. <laughs> I guess I, I'm lost. Jeff Howe with us here uh, from The Athletic talking NFL. Jeff, do the Packers have any choice but to play Aaron Rodgers if Rodgers wants to play? No, they don't, unless they want to really drive a stake in that relationship. I mean, if, if you want Rodgers to come back next year, and I have to think that they do, you can't sit there and say, all right, we know you want to play, but you're not going to do that because we know what Aaron Rodgers' pride is and what that means to him. If he wants to go out there and play, they really don't have a choice. I do think – I thought it was impressive that Rodgers really admitted the other night oh, that once they're mathematically eliminated, he's open to having that conversation. And that's really interesting because that's going to give Jordan Love the, the chance because they're going to be eliminated in two weeks, probably three at the longest. So that's going to give Jordan Love a chance to play, what, three or four games down the stretch. And if he looks as good as he did over a very short spurt the other night, then the Packers have something to think about. And everybody's going to have some real honest conversations. And I, I'm not saying moving Aaron Rodgers in the offseason would be easy or even, you know, one of the two most likely scenarios that happens. But if he says, hey, you know what, I'm open to playing somewhere else and the Packers are open to doing it, uh, think about the draft compensation they get. They can get in return because yeah. this is a team that underachieved this year, obviously. And then you're going to have, I, I want to say it's like 40 million in dead space next year. Some of that's offset by having a, a quarterback still on his rookie contract. But you're talking about a rebuild, and then maybe getting two first round picks, maybe then some, is it, really going to help that team move into the future. Jeff, what are your thoughts on this Lamar Jackson tweet controversy? Uh, you know, John Harbaugh came out earlier this week and said it was out of character. Do you think it was overblown or, or do you think Lamar, you know, should have taken accountability and there and there should have been some kind of controversy here? Uh, the, uh, he said some stuff you, you just quite simply can't say. Yeah. So that's – and then when you, you – I do believe 
from everything I've, I've learned about Lamar Jackson, it was out of character. But, like, when you're on social media, when you're a franchise quarterback, when you've got that spotlight, you just can't make mistakes like that. Uh, if you want to call it a mistake or something more egregious. Uh, he said something he shouldn't have said. He's got a chance to kind of face it and, and make it right this week. But, you know, this is a guy who has put a lot of pressure on himself to perform because of the, co- the contract talks that have surrounded him for basically two years at this point. And when they have the struggles that they've had, not just the other day, but really all season, closing games and losing these leads, and, and the offense has, has tailed off dramatically since week three. Uh, I, he's, I think that's a guy who just, you know, let the pressure get to him and, and had a moment that I'm sure he'd like to, to have back. Yeah, there was some talk about how, you know, people, the journalist in question was, was you know, overstepping and stuff like that. But a very interesting situation playing out with Lamar and his contract's interesting. Uh, Jeff Howe with us from The Athletic. One more for you, Jeff. Is there anything the Broncos can do other than be stuck with Russell Wilson? No, no, they're stuck. It's, it's what they can do is move on from Nathaniel Hackett. And I wrote something last week about, how the, the situation that an organization goes through when they have a one and done coach and how long it takes them to recover. And the vast, I mean, there's basically two one and done situations that have ever led to like immediate success. You've got the, C, the Seahawks with Pete Carroll, and then you've got the 49ers back in the seventies when they went one and done three years in a row and then stumbled upon Bill Walsh. So that's two out of 29 since 1970. But I think you got to look at this situation and, and see that you've got Nathaniel Hackett, who uh, a lot of times has looked extremely overwhelmed as a head coach. And you've got to wonder, if you're the new ownership group, do you just want to cut ties now and go in a different direction? Because you, the, the ultimate, the, you know, you, you can always look at it and say, well, what if the Patriots fired Bill Belichick after 5-11 and 11 in 2000? And what if and this and that and look at other scenarios? You need to look at two things right now. One, is he the guy for the job? Overall, yeah, is it a first-year learning curve? Is it a lot of pressure? Are there reasons to think that you know he can still command the locker room next year? But two, and maybe more importantly, is his system that he brought from Green Bay or his past teams, is this just not conducive to Russell Wilson's success? And, and whatever that disconnect may be, if it's irreparable, then you have to move on because you have a contract with Russell Wilson that you can't get out of for quite some time. So you need to make that work. Jeff, great stuff as always, my friend, man. We'll catch up again next week. I appreciate you. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Have a good week. All right. You too. There goes uh, Jeff Howe from The Athletic.